So the next thing that we'll be doing with this example problem, uh, one where we cannot use a psychometric chart, is we will apply the first law. So we've applied mass flow rate conservation to both the dry air as well as water vapor. And with that, we are able to determine the amount of water coming in. We know specific humidity at one, two, and three. Uh, the things that we're still trying to find, however, is temperature in the midsection at point two, uh, we don't know the relative humidity there either, nor do we know the amount of heat flowing in between one and two. So uh, we'll now take a look at the first law and see what that can do for us. So we're gonna begin by applying the first law from one to two. So this is our heating section. So that's the full-blown form of the first law there. Now, for a heating section, we're not doing any work. We're either just, well, we're adding heat, we're not removing it. So the work terms disappear as well as does the heat out because we're putting heat in. And what we remain or left with is Q in. And again, I'm doing this thing here by expressing it in terms of the mass flow rate of dry air because remember, we're dealing with enthalpy for HVAC and there we always express enthalpy per kilogram of dry air. So we have H2 and H1 in this equation. We already know M dot A, the mass flow rate of dry air. So let's write out H2. So looking at our expression for enthalpy at state two, And similarly, enthalpy at state one. Okay, so when I look at this equation, uh, we know the inlet temperature T1, we know specific humidity one, we know specific humidity at two, however, we do not know T2. And so consequently, we do not know H2. So that's an unknown that we still have in our problem. So let's move along and let's take a look at applying the first law between uh, points two and three. Actually, I'm gonna go back on one slide here. And given that we do know the conditions for H1, I am going to evaluate that. So I can plug in the values for T1 as well as specific volume of one. And we get the enthalpy at one to be 24.3608. But what we can say is we do not know H2 at this point because we do not know T2. So let's go back to the first law, you know, looking between states two and three and see if there's anything more we can pull from this. And what we have here, this is our system whereby we're injecting steam. So we basically just have mass flow in, mass flow out, multiplied by the enthalpy stream. So let's expand that. Okay, so we have this expression here. Now we know the mass flow rate uh, of air at two is equal to the mass flow rate of air at three. And the other thing that we can determine is the enthalpy of the inlet stream. We're told it's 100 degrees C saturated vapor. And so from that, you can go to your steam tables.
And so that's how we can get that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to isolate for H2 in this equation, because remember, we don't know T2. Uh, if we know H2, that will help us get T2. So in this equation, we know a number of these different terms. But one term that we don't know, however, we still don't know what H3 is. So if we can determine that, we know everything else in this equation. That will enable us to get H2 and then T2 indirectly. So uh, let's work towards getting H3. We have that expression. Now we know T3, we know a specific volume of 3, so we can directly calculate H3. H3 then turns out to be the following. And I put DA there for kilograms of dry air. Now we'll go back to our last equation here. And we now have all the things enabling us to get H2. So let's go ahead and plug those values in. Oops, sorry. So we get that for H2 by plugging in the values. It's 34. And remember what we're after here. We want to know the mid temperature. So let's equate that to our definition for enthalpy at 0.2. And here I have expanded the second term. And so with this, what we want to do, we want to go ahead and calculate or solve for T2. So when we do that, we get T2 is 14 point, sorry, 19, 19.49 degrees C. And that is answer to part A. Now, they also want us to get the relative humidity at this temperature. So let's go ahead and solve for the relative humidity. So again there, what we do, we go to our steam tables uh, for this temperature of 19.5 degrees C. And the specific volume at 2 is the same as the, sorry, specific uh, humidity at 2 is the same as specific humidity at 1. And with that, we can then directly evaluate the relative humidity at point 0.2. So the relative humidity at 0.2 turns out to be 37.8%. And so that is answer to part A. So notice we relative humidity with heating, we went from 70% down to 37.8%. So it was dropping as a result of the heating. Final thing they want us to determine is the heat transfer in our heating section. So let's take a look at that. Um, for that, we go back to the first law between point 0.1 and point 0.2. And that one we expressed in terms of the flow rate of dry air. 
and we have all the terms required to solve for this now. That's in kilojoules per second, and given they gave us flow rate in per minute, I'll express it in kilojoules per minute. And so that gives us the answer to part B. So that's a solution to this example problem. You can see it's a little bit laborious um, when you don't or are not able to use a psychometric chart, but nonetheless it does demonstrate all the different equations that you can use for solving these sorts of uh, air conditioning processes. The next example we'll look at will be quite a bit easier because it will be at one atmosphere and consequently we'll be able to use a psychrometric chart.